Welcome back everybody. Today's video is going to be the return of the counter series where we're going to be talking about how to deal with three heroes today, but by popular demand, we're not going to be continuing the alphabetical order that we've done in the past, but we're going to be talking to you about three super pesky meta heroes right now and just giving you a brief glimpse into how we can deal with these heroes, whether it's picking better matchups or general just play style to consider when facing against these opponents. Let's go ahead and get started. So number one, we have our boy Nature's Prophet. So why is Nature's Prophet in this video? If you look, his win rate is 53% and he also is the fifth most popular hero in Dota right now. So you're almost certainly seeing this hero creep up in all your games. What's happening? This hero is now getting played as a support. What they did for Nature's Prophet is that his Sprout now does damage every half second. So the numbers you see for the Sprout damage there are actually doubled per second. That's the major change that they gave him this patch, which has made him as a support an absolute terror. Also, tangos that consume a tree created by Sprout no longer give any regen, rather than in the past giving double. So what this means is that if you're sprouted, you're fucked. And if you use a tango to get out, you wasted a tango. So what is that telling us? First and foremost, you have to buy a Quelling Blade. And we're not talking about buying a Quelling Blade on the carry that's laning against Nature's Prophet or the offlaner that's laning against the five position Nature's Prophet. We're talking about buying a Quelling Blade on literally all five heroes on the opposite team because Nature's Prophet being a support can TP to your lane at level two. And if you don't have a Quelling, you actually just die on average. And on top of this, in previous patches, they've made it so that when he teleports in, he gets damage and armor stacks. And what that means is his first attack will do 36 bonus damage, then 30, then 24, then 18. And so what we're hearing here is that when he TPs in, this hero's just been given a shit ton of free damage in the previous patches. So a lot of Nature's Prophets are going for very like aura type builds, utility builds with like Solar Crest, Ag Scepter, Pipe. And this is what we're seeing from Nature's Prophet right now. So how do we deal with this, right? How do we beat Nature's Prophet? So let's look at some of the best matchups. So we talked about what makes him broken. Stuff that's made him broken in the past is still there, but that wasn't like what put him over the edge. It's the stuff we've already talked about. So let's address the Sprout. Heroes that can naturally get out of Sprout, not counting the level 20 talent that leashes you. We're seeing Broodmother with Free Pathing, Batrider with Firefly, Waveform from Morphling, Trample from Primal Beast destroys the trees. Q from Spectre. Roll from Earth Spirit. You're seeing a large portion of the heroes up top simply being able to get out of Sprout. And this is no joke, right? Not only is it that these heroes are mobile so they can get out of Sprout, but being mobile also allows you to catch the Nature's Prophet. You know, he TPs in, you TP in, and you kill him. So another way to potentially deal with that global mobility would be a global hero itself. But we don't actually see any global heroes in here, you know, like the Wisps or the Dawnbreakers. The only one we actually see is Spectre because Spectre is a global hero that kills you, not like a global hero that counter initiates. So we're seeing heroes that can proactively get out of Sprout and we're also seeing heroes that can just outright murder the Nature's Prophet if he's in their vision. Batrider, Primal Beast, Spectre, right? They see the, the Nature's Prophet and they go get the Nature's Prophet. So the next step is that Nature's Prophet is a single target hero through and through. Like, yeah, he can sprout a hero, but what does he do against summons? What does he do if you're just running at him? So what we're seeing here also is generally summons heroes and illusion heroes and heroes that deal well with creep waves getting pushed. So if you think about Nature's Prophet, right? He's single target, but he also clears waves. So heroes that benefit that are illusion heroes because they can, they're hard for him to kill. And also that they make it so that the lane pressure is not so immense from the Nature's Prophet. Notice how out of all the illusion heroes, you see Terrorblade and Naga up here, you don't see PL. He's only slightly favored, but that's because he's an illusion hero. So he's good against Nature's Prophet but he doesn't push lanes very hard until like two or three items, which means in the early game, you may be under a lot of pressure. So that's why PL is much farther down here. So we have to remember what Nature's Prophet's strengths are. The early game, have to buy a Quelling Blade, and we have to have heroes that can jump him, whether that be like the Primal Beast or even like the heroes not necessarily on here, the Spirits, have somebody that can actually punish him 
when he TPs in or shows on the map. Especially heroes that can get vision and trees. That's especially important because usually Nature's Prophet will like TP into the side of the lane and kind of like cloak his hero while he uses treants to push. So what should we largely avoid picking against Nature's Prophet? It's heroes that want you to fight them. These are the heroes that are bad. You find yourself saying, I'm trying to make them fight me. I have a lot of team fight. I'm slow. I usually like don't like people invading areas. Like you're thinking like Venno holds areas slow. This hero wants to fight you. Fight, 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 fight. These are all heroes that want to force fights around them. All strong team fight, right? But they lack catch. That's generally like the what we're seeing here. Other than maybe a hero like Sven, who probably just gets five slotted and gets sprouted, right? We get sprout teased. But that's like the general thing we're seeing here. Lack of map mobility lack of the ability to actually catch the Nature's Prophet, and no real way to get out of Sprout either, and we're also seeing a lot of backline supports that might just get assassinated in fights. So that's Nature's Prophet. Next up on our list is another absolutely broken hero, which is Gyrocopter, who is sitting in my bracket at pick ban every single game, but 10th most popular, 53% win rate. And right now he's getting played as a carry. And the major changes that they gave is that his Ag Scepter now procs twice whenever he has Flak Cannon activated. Also, the radius of Flak Cannon went from 1000 to 1250, which is a huge difference in terms of positioning against it. And then now, so when he pops his Ag Scepter Flak, right, he's hitting pretty much everybody in the team fights. And then if he uses Satanic, then the Ag Scepter is procking twice as often. So what's important to note about Gyrocopter is that he's a high move speed ranged hero. He's not really a ranged hero. Like he's short ranged, but the way he plays fights is actually like a melee hero that stands his ground. And the entire hero operates around his Ag Scepter. So what that means is he's gonna stand his ground, he's gonna pop Satanic, he's gonna have Ag Scepter, and you're not gonna be able to kill him. And 100%, it's broken. Like there's a reason why his win rate's really high. But you have to remember that that's what we're trying to counter here. We're trying to counter the guy that stands still with the Satanic, with Ag Scepter on. So for the sake of this video, we're going to ignore his other three abilities, and we're just going to talk about Flat Cannon and Ag Scepter. It works if you're stunned. So if you stun the Gyrocopter and he has Flat Cannon, he's still hitting two people, and he's life-stealing, and he's critting, and all that kind of stuff. And even though, like, Maelstroms and crits and MKBs don't work on Flat Cannon, they work on his Ag Scepter. So even if he's stunned, even if he's Ethereal Bladed, even if he's Halberded, he will still Ag Scepter proc. So what does this tell us? What does this left to do? BSJ, don't we just die to Gyro before we kill him? The answer is you can break Gyro and his Ag Scepter will not work. So that's actually something I don't see purchased nearly enough in our games. We're talking about ranged Silver Edge builders because you don't want to go two feet from this guy, right? You want to be across the screen. Ranged Silver Edge builders and then heroes with natural break will be very good against Gyro. Also, Heroes that make it difficult for him to stand still. So heroes that basically say, you have to run away from me. Or heroes that heavily mitigate his damage so he can't lifesteal when he's there. So we're talking about outranging him, Silver Edge breaking him from a distance, heroes that mitigate his damage significantly, and heroes that prevent him from standing his ground. So what are we seeing? Razor, right? Drains, prevents him from standing his ground. Underlord buys Crimson with the aura. I actually don't understand Brood. The arena prevents Flak Cannon from hitting everybody. Hero like Chen with uh, Penitence actually makes your entire team murder the Gyro. Sniper outranges him. Huskar with the Ag Scepter. Anti-healing from AA. The break mechanic from Viper. Anti-healing from Doom. So these are all heroes that either get up in your face and remove your damage, or they are heroes that prevent you from healing, or they are heroes that make you run away from them. So like another hero I like to pick, is something like Slardar with uh, Amp Damage. I've had good success with that so far in my pubs, even though it's not on this list. But if you look at all these heroes, they either can't be hit by Gyro in the case of like Omni Slash from Juggernaut or Sniper or Drow who are outranging him. But then it's also just heroes that make him not heal and effectively like the Satanic doesn't keep him alive. So we're seeing Bane with like Enfeeble. We're seeing Shatter Demon with the Break actually. So these are all the heroes that Gyro has a really hard time dealing with. So we have to remember that Gyro's tempo is that from like the 12 minute mark until 20, he's actually not that strong. This hero's like pretty strong up until about 12 minutes. He's a really strong laner. He's going to flat cannon the wave out and there's really not much most heroes can do about it. So picking off laners with built-in sustain with high base damage that just plan to deny creeps 
Underlord was like the prime example. You know, I've tried Slardar with a couple Bracers, you know, any hero where you're just going to buy some sustain, kind of expect to not be able to pressure the Gyro early because he's really strong. But then you want to invade him from like the 12 to 20 minute mark. Heroes with blinks and the ability to just kill him before he gets that Satanic. He has Ag Scepter. His farming speed is ramping up but he's not able to stand his ground yet. He also doesn't have any built-in sustain, so he's actually usually farming at like half HP. So this is the window of time where punishing Gyro is absolutely essential. So kind of like let him have his lane most of the time. Don't try to like overly invest in shutting down his lane. Pick a hero that will do the things we talked about and either hunt him down at 12 minutes or heavily mitigate his damage later, such that that timing is not so such a critical mass that Gyro is gonna hit. And that's really the best way to deal with Gyro in 7.34b. So, last but not least, we got ourselves Witch Doctor. Now, this is a hero, I'll be honest, I don't see it very often in my games. I'll maybe see one Witch Doctor a day. But I have been told nonstop that this hero is in all of your games. And I see a 54.7% win rate, and we're going to talk about why. What did they do? They buff the ever-living shit out of his Death Ward. It is now pure damage, and when he buys an Ags, it bounces to pretty much everybody on the enemy team, and it is pure damage. So what are we hearing? Everything about this hero that's broken is that he kills you. This hero is gonna be a backline support that kills and murders everybody, even potentially a core, right? So this hero is gonna murder everybody. And why is he so good in the lower MMRs especially? Because he's somebody you have to focus and you don't focus him, so he kills you. So what are we gonna learn here? We are gonna learn that we must find the Witch Doctor. We must kill the Witch Doctor. Now, BSJ, he has a shard where he goes invisible or uh, he phase shifts like Puck. Well, silences and vision heroes, people. Heroes that find him and silence him. If you can have both, that's the dream. But this is what we're looking for. Because what Witch Doctor does not have is an instance done. He needs to see you. His ability set is a kind of a little clunky, right? He doesn't really set himself up. He needs like the fight to break out and then he plops down his ulti and kills everybody. But he doesn't do that himself. So high mobility, the ability to find him, and silences. That's what we need against Witch Doctor. So what do we see? The likes of Puck, the likes of Batrider, Night Stalker. We're talking about heroes like Morphling, Void, these cores that can jump on top of you, and they also have built-in sustain. So something we have to add here is that usually Witch Doctor's ult is not necessarily enough to murder everybody unless you're in Herald and nobody touches him. It's the Maledict, right? Maledict does damage based on the HP number that you had when he casted it. So say I'm Morphling and I have 600 HP and he uses Maledict on me and I take a thousand damage, but I've morphed up to 2000 HP. So my effective health right now is a thousand. I take zero Maledict damage because my starting HP was 600 and now I have a thousand. So it's not about how much damage you take like Orchid. It's about how much HP you have and the difference between at the start and the end. So heroes with built-in sustain or a hero like Medusa that literally just has no HP. <laughs> because everything's in her mana shield. So Medusa, Morphling, Void, these are the best type of heroes in the carry role because they just don't die to Maledict. But then when we're looking at the other heroes, we're talking about heroes that are going to find you, get up in your face, and kill you really fast. Talking about heroes that kill you really fast. Ursa, Templar Assassin, Wind Ranger, Willow, right? These are all heroes with high damage outputs. Apparently every hero loses the Broodmother, by the way. I don't know what's up with this. And... Funnily enough, the best hero in the game right now in this current week, but not counting Brood, is actually Rubik, who I would beg to argue is simply because he steals your ultimate because you're channeling it, and then casts it from further range and kills your entire team with it. So we are really seeing that Witch Doctor is broken purely based on his ultimate and his ability to just kill everybody at once. So all the heroes that look to find him quickly burst him. Even you see like Tiny, Ricky. These are the heroes we're looking at. Now, what do we not pick against Witch Doctor? Heroes that are immobile, tanky, and will just die to Maledict because they usually rely on you using a bunch of damage on them and then they live and then they come back and fight you because they have like, you know, 20, 30% HP. We're seeing Axe, we're seeing Underlord, Viper, Huskar, Spectre, you know, Bloodseeker turns fights at low HP. Like all of these heroes are combination of immobile tanky people that don't usually mind getting initiated onto the problem with witch doctor is if he initiates onto you with maledict and ulti even if the ulti goes off for like one or two seconds you're just dead so it's all about finding the witch doctor before he finds you and i know that's going to be tough for your guys's pubs but especially i recommend picking the heroes that do it on their own the night stalkers 
the Ursas, the Faceless Voids, the Puck, and you can make it your own personal mission to just fucking kill that guy. And honestly, if Witch Doctor is not wiping the entire team with his ultimate, he's really not that strong of a hero. Like, a lot of the Witch Doctors in my games don't feel all that impactful if they get focused. So even though his win rate is very high, and he's absolutely broken for sure in pubs, if we can learn to find the Witch Doctor, you know, just find him forehead thank you so much for watching guys please let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this new style of counter videos and hopefully we can continue more in the future thanks for watching like comment subscribe if i didn't already say that bye